This is the Foxhole Podcast. Anger. Man, something that comes to mind a lot. Because not too long ago, I was angry a lot. <laughs> Probably like a lot of you, right? Now, what is anger? I've sort of come to realize that anger is really just fear and sadness. And when you put those two things together, you have anger. What constitutes anger? Not too long ago, also, I had a really terrible relationship with one of my sons. And despite having tremendous respect and care for him and loving him deeply, I was really able, really unable to communicate that to him. I don't think he knew that I loved him very much. What he did know is I was angry at him. Man, we were traveling to sporting events on a regular basis, out of state, out of town, long weekend trips for him to play competitive basketball. Man, we would be in the car for four hours, sometimes longer, and we might only exchange a couple of words, right? One, he had to go to the bathroom. Two, he was hungry. That was the extent of our relationship. And no matter how hard I tried, every time I talked to him or said something to him, I would end up angry. And I know that he heard that and those comments from me as sort of disappointment, right? That that's what it felt like to him. That it felt like I was not happy with him. But that wasn't it at all. I couldn't get out of that funk. I couldn't get out of that rut. I couldn't, I couldn't break that cycle. It took some, some other veterans that I work with and that we get together with. And this is why it's good to have a buddy system. It's good to have three to five other guys and gals like you that will keep you honest and keep you thinking and tell you the way it is. But it was through them that I learned that I needed to just shut my mouth when he was talking. That really what I was doing when I thought I was communicating to him was offering a whole lot of unsolicited advice. And that they're the ones to help me realize my anger was based on fear and sadness and my own fear that a mistake he made on the basketball court would cause another parent to question, well, why did he do that? Or if he chose not to go to a certain tournament, well, what's going on? That I was afraid to have to answer those questions as a parent. And it also made me realize that much of his basketball career was based on my wants for him. From the moment he was born, I had a basketball in his hand. I never really stopped to ask him, hey son, what do you want to do? What do you want? What do you love? What are you truly passionate about? Instead, his existence had been one to fulfill something that I wanted him to have. And now here he is every day approaching another day of him leaving the house and going off on his own, uh, a man in his own right, And he's living for me. Completely unfair. Completely inappropriate for me as a parent. But something I think we probably, a lot of us struggle with. And communication with our spouses and our families and our our children. So I really, I really had to just shut up and listen. And I really had to just ask him, hey, what is it you want? And so I made a date with him to go work out. And in that time, I just apologized and said, hey, listen, this is what I've been doing. I've been doing it because I love you, but I haven't been listening to you. And that was the first time I asked him, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And that was the first time that he felt safe in me telling him that whatever he wanted to do, I would support and I would be good with. It didn't have to be basketball. And I'll never forget that day. 
He was pretty blunt and honest with me and saying, hey, listen, the reason I don't want to play basketball anymore is it's not fun. The reason I don't want to go here is I'm not having a good time. Clearly, he wasn't because he was getting a lot of unsolicited advice and criticism from me. And my fear and my sadness led to anger. And that cycle just continued to serve itself. And every time I got angry with him and said something to him that I didn't mean in my heart, that sent me into a cave that I would detach from the situation, feeling guilty and miserable about what I had said or done. And then I would self-isolate, right? I just put myself in, in a timeout. And in doing that, I'm not talking to him. And that cycle just continued. But after we had that conversation, it was the first time that he felt, I think, that he could talk to me, that he could trust me, that he could say anything to me and it would be okay, that I would support him no matter what he wanted to do, that I was there to be his dad, to be his supporter, to be someone caring and loving for him and not just someone critical of him. So I hope all of you, if you have something like that going on in your life, if you find yourself angry or upset about something and you maybe realize that that anger is just fear and sadness. This is the Foxhole Podcast.